Welcome to Sketchy. We take all the super complex stuff you need to learn and turn it into memorable visual stories packed full of everything you need to know on test day. But like any good scientist knows, the best way to find out is to try for yourself, which you can do for free, like right now. So let's get to it. Hello, health nuts. Here we are in the waiting room of Sketchy U's Student Health Center, where the well gets sick and the sick get sicker. Wait, that's not right. Anyway, this is the perfect place to get physical and talk about the physical properties of organic molecules. Grab a seat on a vinyl upholstered couch and let's get started. Is it just me or is it hot in here? Since a lot of the folks in this waiting room seem to be running a fever, this sketch will focus on some other important temperatures. Boiling points and melting points. Boiling and melting point temperatures depend on how difficult it is to pull two copies of the same molecule apart from each other. The harder that process is, or the more force sticking the molecules together, the higher the molecules boiling and melting points will be. The technical term for the forces sticking molecules to each other is intermolecular forces. And this use the force banner for intramural sports should remind you of intermolecular forces. The strongest of the intermolecular forces is hydrogen bonding, which we've represented with this hockey player who's the tallest patient in the waiting room. Hydrogen bonding happens anytime a hydrogen atom bonded to oxygen, nitrogen, or fluorine encounters a lone pair on another atom in another molecule. And this athlete's high fever is a great reminder that molecules that can hydrogen bond typically have high boiling and melting points. Dipole-dipole interactions, represented by this track star's pole that broke into a dipole, are of intermediate strength. That's why this young woman is mid-height among the waiting room crew. Dipole interactions happen between molecules with permanently polarized bonds. The larger the overall dipole of a molecule, the stronger the dipole force of attraction between two copies of that molecule. So, our dipole vaulter is running a mid-grade fever. That should remind you that dipole-dipole interactions lead to moderate melting and boiling points, since they're moderate in strength. And what about this fella? This cricket player is sporting a Union Jack to remind you of London dispersion forces. These are the weak interactions when one molecule with little or no dipole of its own induces a temporary dipole in another molecule. Our cricketeer is slouching to represent the relative weakness of London dispersion forces. And he's not running a fever at all, since molecules with only London dispersion forces have the lowest boiling and melting points. So, now that we know how intermolecular forces control boiling and melting points of molecules, let's see how boiling and melting points vary between different functional groups. This thermometer poster will help us arrange some common functional groups from high to low boiling and melting points. First, an important proviso. When we compare boiling and melting points by functional group, we need to choose molecules of roughly the same molecular weight. Otherwise, differing chain lengths will also affect the boiling and melting points, which means we would be comparing apples with potatoes, or in this setting, maybe mumps with rubella. But more on that later. Let's get started. At a given molecular weight, the carboxylic acid functional group will result in the highest possible boiling point. That's why we've placed this cardboard box on the highest shelf of this medicine cabinet. Carboxylic acids have very strong hydrogen bonding forces due to the strong polarization of their OH bonds, and they also have strong dipoles due to their carbonyl CO bonds. In fact, CO double bonds, like the one in a carbonyl, have much stronger dipoles than CO single bonds. This power-packed combo of intramolecular forces makes carboxylic acids the highest temperature boilers and melters. Next are alcohols. They are represented by the rubbing alcohol on the second highest shelf. Alcohols have relatively strong hydrogen bonding due to their OH bonds, but no extra dipole boost. Then come the ketones, aldehydes, and other molecules whose only major intermolecular force is that strong carbonyl-caused dipole. They're represented by this ketone key in the supply case. Even lower are ethers, alkyl halides, and any other functional group that contains only dipoles due to single bonds. They're represented by this bottle of ether on the next to last shelf. Finally, we have this prescription for a cane 
to represent the lowly alkanes and other hydrocarbons. These molecules only have London dispersion forces sticking them to each other, which results in very low boiling and melting points. While we're checking out the supplies in this lovely display case, there's a happy accident we can use to our advantage. Turns out that the order of functional group acidities is the same order as that of the functional group boiling points. That's why this first aid cabinet has been labeled with an acidic leaven. That means functional groups become less acidic as you move down this medicine cabinet. Carboxylic acids are the most acidic functional groups, and alkanes are the least acidic functional groups. Acidity isn't a function of intermolecular forces the way boiling and melting points are, but the same underlying causes, the presence or absence of highly electronegative atoms, and the presence or absence of resonance-capable bonds, affect them both. Here's how it works. The resonance-stabilized oxygen anion, created when a carboxylic acid is deprotonated, is way more stable than the single-bonded carbon anion created when an alkane is deprotonated, which makes the carboxylic acid way more acidic than the alkane. All right, just two more trends to know. Let's look at these two not-so-patient patients to talk about the final features that can affect the physical properties of organic molecules. We're going to be returning to the concept of boiling points and melting points, which is why one of these weighters is clearly running a higher temperature than the other. Remember how we said that to compare functional groups we needed to keep the molecular weights relatively constant? That's because longer chain molecules have significantly higher boiling and melting points. This feverish long chain necklace wearing professor is here to remind you of that. In contrast, Short chain molecules, like this not so feverish patient who's wearing a short chain necklace, have lower boiling and melting points. The reason for this trend is that London dispersion forces, though weak individually, are mighty on mass. So, as molecules get big, London dispersion forces can start to increase boiling and melting points. A lot. Speaking of which, let's talk about the effect of molecular shape on boiling and melting points. If you keep functional groups and molecular weights the same, long snake-like molecules have higher boiling and melting points than rounder molecules. The overlapping strands of this long braid are here to remind you that when long skinny molecules overlap, there's a lot of surface area in which London dispersion forces can occur. That raises the melting and boiling point, hence the professor's fever. And this non-feverish patient's round buns are here to remind you that round molecules have minimal contact with each other. That minimizes the dispersion forces between them, leading to lower melting and boiling points. So low fever. And that's it. We've mastered the physicality of organic molecules just in time to head into our annual physical. Let's recap. Intermolecular forces are the most important factors affecting boiling and melting points. Hydrogen bonding is the strongest, dipole-dipole interactions are moderate, and London dispersion forces are the weakest. This leads to a hierarchy of boiling and melting points for molecules according to their functional group. Carboxylic acids have the highest boiling and melting points, then alcohols, then carbonyls, then ethers, then hydrocarbons. For slightly different reasons, this also ends up being the same as the hierarchy of acidities of organic functional groups. After looking at the functional group, boiling point is determined largely by molecular weight, with longer chain molecules having higher boiling points. And the last factor is molecular shape. Long rope-like molecules have higher boiling and melting points than round ones. And as fun as it's been to wonder what diseases I'm going to catch from just breathing the air in here, they called my name, so I'm headed in. See you next time. Enjoy this lesson? Want to see more? Let us know by using the link in the description below.